Hi guys, it is October 9, 2018. Is this an update on Hurricane Michael? Well, in part, it's really a video about lying and how we now are living outrageous lies. And because we do have 99% of our country who lie and or accept lies, the danger of that practice is that we just fall into living a friggin' nightmare that just gets darker and darker each day that we continue to accept lies and lie. And isn't it great? No, it really is not great for those of us who regard the truth as sacrosanct who believe that the truth is the only way that we can ever manifest anything healthy, it is very upsetting to live each day listening to these lies. And that they become so outrageous. It's, um, and, and that you see so many people partaking in the lie. It's repulsive and it just breaks your heart because you know that we are not going to ever get anywhere. And more and people, more and more people are having to suffer the consequences. So National Hurricane Center refers to Michael as a hurricane. It's a hurricane. And boy, mainstream media an estimated 120, 120,000 have been ordered to evacuate along the Florida Panhandle today. Get out as this hurricane rapidly picks up steam in the Gulf of Mexico. It has close to winds of 110 miles per hour a potential storm surge of 12 feet. Guess what? That's today. National Hurricane Center Director Ken Graham. He says, if they tell you to leave, you have to leave. By 11 a.m., Michael had winds of up to 110 miles per hour, just below a Category 3. It's getting stronger. Governor Rick Scott calls it a monstrous hurricane. Senator Bill Nelson said a wall of water could cause major destruction along the panhandle. Don't think you can ride it out, Nelson stated. Oh boy, three to six inches of rain to Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia, triggering flash flooding in a corner of the country still recovering from Hurricane Florence, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper weighed in. I know people are fatigued from Florence, but don't let this storm catch you with your guard down. Number of homes have rooftop tarps and they could be blown away from the wind. Pensacola, Escambia, County Sheriff, if you decide to stay in your home and a tree falls on your house or the storm surge catches you and you're now calling for help, there's no one that can respond to help you. You stay, you don't get help. You stay, we're just going to turn a blind eye and let you die. So they issue these threats so that everybody marches in step, obey, comply, obey your authority, just like your president said, heed your local officials. A small panhandle city of Apalachicola, I actually have a, well, had a friend who has a home right smack on the beach at Electricola and 2,300 
residents in Apalachicola, they're frantically preparing for what could be a blow unlike any seen in decades. In fact, the mayor said it's possibly greater than I've seen in my 59 years of life. Do these quotes remind you of anything? Florence, the mayor of Georgetown in South Carolina, the flooding, it's coming, it's definite, it's imminent, and it will be like nothing you have ever experienced. And they got no flooding at all. Okay. Um, this on satellite is quote unquote Hurricane Michael. Manufactured by man. And I'm not going to waste your time going through all of the signatures in this satellite image of Hurricane Michael. But look at this. Look at the radar. There's no hurricane at all. There's no hurricane at all. None. There is not a hurricane here, okay? What you would be seeing on radar is the precipitation, which would pretty much um, look similar to this cloud mass. But you don't. What you see is man trying very hard to make a hurricane. And yes, you can see all of the signatures, the extremely low frequencies, the frayed edges, all of the microwaves that they are trying, that, that they are using to try to get a hurricane but they haven't succeeded yet. Does that mean that you're not going to get massive flooding? No, because they can cause flash flooding anywhere they want. But they, they do all of this drama, the hurricane. It's plausible deniability. It's it's just the reason that they give you for the flash flooding that will be occurring in many states. They need something to explain it, so they say it's a hurricane. They're already forecasting flash flooding in Virginia when this precipitation blob has not even formed into a hurricane yet. But you do see the next red harp signature right here. So they're heating this up, trying very hard to get that hurricane spin. You don't see any eye here. There's no hurricane here. Let me say it again clearly. There is no hurricane. Mainstream media, government officials are lying to you. All right, you know, in Truth by Grace, posting on Hurricane Michael, and she sh points out no wind speeds of hurricanes. There, there, this is what we are living now. A reality so warped and twisted that there, there. How do you? Where do you find the door to exit from it? When so many people are involved in it, even the innocent people who refuse to have any conversation about weather modification, they're involved in it. They make themselves complicit with this. Um, fabricated reality.
You know, let's not leave the UK out. UK weather forecast forecast Met Office issues danger to life storm. Warning is freak heat. Freak heat. We've got freak heat. We have uh, weather bombs now. Weather bombs. Here's another article. UK weather forecast 90 mile per hour weather bomb to hit Britain as most powerful storm of year hits. Oh, and May, please, just, I don't know, um, indulge me. Leslie, still in the same area, making her look a little bit more hurricane-ish, right? Completely manufactured, you see the, the defined line top of the storm. But where is this going now? Unless they change the track in the last half hour? Now, well, Leslie, you've been recalled and you're going back to Africa. Now your tracking has changed again. You were headed for Portugal. Now you're heading back to Africa. Leslie, well, you've broken down in the middle of the Atlantic and you've got to return. You've been recalled. This thing has been sitting there for a really long time and it is obviously, well, what is it? Don't know what it is. But Leslie has lost her way she is lost. She has no idea what she's doing. Maybe she's drunk. Get back to where we claim these hurricanes start. Go home. This is the life we're living. The abject idiocy of it all is so clear in our face. We are being made complete and utter fools of and that these people can just say whatever the hell they want to say. Like governors and presidents and meteorologists. Those who work for the National Hurricane Center. Sergio still in its same place. Hasn't moved. Still on track for New Mexico. Uh, the tracking has changed a bit. Now it's going to hit El Paso, but it's still in the same place that it was and has been for days. For days. But the storm's going to uh, the UK. Well, manufactured. Manufactured. I can't believe what we're living. Hurricane Michael approaches a guide to stock market exposure. Let's listen. Time for futures in focus. Hurricane Michael heading towards the Florida panhandle, threatening some crops. Crops, sorry. Joining us now from the CME is Ted Seifert, Vice President at Zena Ag Hedge. Um, Ted, good morning. Cotton, I guess, is probably the main focus here. How much cotton is still in the fields? Yeah, so for the current track, cotton is the main focus uh, for Michael right now. Uh, the Carolinas and Georgia produce about 20% of the U.S. cotton. Some key areas could be receiving up to 5 to 7 inches of rain, which could produce a fair amount of damage because we're only about 10% harvested in those areas. Okay, uh, this is happening to farms all over uh, the world, but Canada, United States, all of the flash flooding that has been occurring. Um, we have seen so many farms destroyed just this past year. All right, hedge fund, hedge funder. I don't give a shit what these people say. The, the, the importance of this is to understand that weather is bet on. It is bet on. I want you to listen to a few minutes of yeah, Naomi Wolf, who has opened her eyes 
has seen uh, what appeared to be rather strange uh, cloud formations in the sky over New York City, has done some research, and now is talking a little bit about geoengineering, uh, but is clearly not up to speed, and boy, do we need somebody like her to be up to speed, so Naomi, could you pick up and start doing the research on geoengineering, weather modification, weather wars, to find out what we really are truly living here. She has not yet accepted the term chemtrails, uh, doesn't want to use it, and at least she said that those, when she started to do the uh, research on geoengineering, she came across communities that were talking about chemtrails. Well, she doesn't want to use that term. She doesn't accept it. But as a journalist, um, she's got to do her own research to find out uh, what actually is taking place. It's unfortunate that when people begin to wake up, they actually think that no one else has been awake for decades. You know, Naomi Wolf, Vietnam, weather modification. It's very, very frustrating, especially, you know, when you hear somebody like Naomi Wolf say, we don't know, we don't know what they're spraying. Naomi, we do, we do. And in the same video that you posted saying, you don't know, we don't know, you know, what uh, is being sprayed, you then know that aluminum, aluminum is being sprayed. So, aluminum, very dangerous. You acknowledge it. So that's why people say chem trails. And people are getting sick and dying from those chem trails, Naomi. So please, please uh, put down the um, focus of the daily clout, which is to analyze bills coming out of Congress because we don't have a government anymore. It has been taken over. So what you are reporting is not significant at all. It doesn't matter. And it, it, it's completely irrelevant because the government does not function as you still believe it functions. There are not two teams. We don't have three separate branches of government. It was taken over a very, very, very long time ago. So, Naomi, okay, you were able to see the weird cloud formations. You understand 5G. Um, uh, you, you think that those weird cloud formations started because 5G is operating in New York? No. Those weird cloud formations have been going on a lot longer than when you first saw them. It's interesting how narcissism creeps up in us. And I'm not saying I happen to really respect Naomi because she is the only public uh, figure, the only uh, journalist that I know of, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but who really steps out of her comfort zone. But we need you now to be out of that comfort zone and doing the research really fast because we are at war, Naomi. We are at war and people are getting hit with what the UK calls weather bombs. Interesting term, isn't it, that the UK the Metro office uses weather bombs, bombogenesis. We've got rain bombs, we've got weather bombs, we've got bombogenesis now. And we have over and over and over again, rain events where people are saying the same thing over and over. Never seen anything like it, never seen anything like it, never seen anything like it. Okay. Um, listen to a few minutes uh, and welcome. Um, so what 
this all started with was last summer I read, because that's our mission at Daily Cloud, a new bill uh, which was passed, um, which is a bill by Representative Zoe Lofgren called um, about the weather industry. And this really struck me because what is a weather industry, right? What is the weather industry? It's sort of the new coinage. In the bill, um, it was even more alarming or uh, newsworthy because what I saw was that $130 million of taxpayer money was directed to unnamed weather industry private stakeholders, and specifically the research and R&D, research and development, the new technologies, the new methods, the new processes that this $130 million is going to pay for, um, the IP goes to these private industry stakeholders. Uh, which is kind of astonishing. Um, it's not like the government keeps the IP and does a better job informing us about the weather, but no, all of the IP, all of the patents go to these unnamed private industry stakeholders, the weather industry. I called uh, Representative Lofgren's office and asked her staffer, what is the weather industry? And I did not get an answer. Um, but it's notable, as you'll understand shortly that Representative Lofgren represents Silicon Valley. Um, that is going to be uh, important in, in a few weeks. All right, so that really led me to look more carefully how are people monetizing the weather. And the other thing that really jumped out at that bill is that uh, oceanographic and meteorological reporting is also privatized in this bill, largely. The Rothschilds own all satellites and radar and weather reporting. One family, Rothschild. Privatized. So we've seen a wave of these bills that get very little press privatizing um, really important objective government functions or functions that should be objective, like meteorology. So this bill privatized a great deal of that. So then I did more reporting and I found out that you can bet on weather that weather became a commodity on the Chicago Stock Exchange uh, some decades ago. And of course, understanding how hedge funds work um, and how certain kinds of investment works uh, in our economy. Of course, if you can bet on a drought or bet on um, a great deal of rainfall, uh, it's really important for agribusness, it's important for Monsanto, it's also important for people who are just hedging the weather. Very important. Why? Well, when you bet on weather <laughs> and you control the weather, you can bet that you're going to make a lot of money. The ho every aspect of life is a scam. That's what we're living today. Every aspect of life is a scam, a meaningless scam. And I, for one, really can't stand it. Can't stand it. So once again, Naomi, please stop analyzing these bills and get on the research that you need to do to bring yourself up to speed to recognize what we are living now. We are living. The 5G is going to imprison us all. The geoengineering, the dumping of toxic chemicals and heavy metals into our atmosphere we have been breathing for decades. They've only been increasing it. And please, do some research on weather modification. Naomi, I know you are smart enough to recognize that this thing, what they're calling Hurricane Michael, is not a hurricane. Right? You are that intelligent to recognize there is no hurricane here. So we need more people who are calling out this weather war that we are living. And 
I understand. It does not matter if you are a nobody like me or a somebody like Naomi Wolf, and I use that language as like a farce, but that's how people think. You're somebody if you are a public figure and you get some notoriety and attention. And you're nobody if you don't. So, um, but I don't do that. We're equals. Naomi Wolf is no better than any of us. And in fact, many who are the quote unquote nobodies have far more knowledge about what is taking place today than Naomi Wolf. But you could influence maybe a few liberal progressives to think differently. Differently. No, <laughs> what we're up against now. Um, who the hell knows? Because those liberal progressives who believe that they are the educated elite are the, they are now showing themselves. Doesn't matter how many degrees you have, doesn't matter the position that you hold, doesn't matter the kind of notoriety that you have, it does not matter how many times you know, people are calling you uh, experts and authorities on subject matters, it does not matter. You proved that you have stopped using your brain. You have proved that you are so not intelligent. So, and I am not referring to Naomi Wolf because she does step outside of that comfort zone and she does have an open mind to consider what so many people will refuse to consider because, oh my God, I'm going to be called a conspiracy theorist because their own egos get hit. That's not this woman, but we do need you... <laughs> to get up to speed, please, please.